Jim, our next question sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Brian in Little Rock, Arkansas. I read online in a random article that you once had to wear a bulletproof vest while performing in Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> Can you tell us about this story? I love the show. Keep up the good work. Thank you for making me laugh on a daily basis. Well, I didn't just wear it in Little Rock, but that's where I got it. Um, it was Mid South Wrestling, nineteen eighty four. Me and the Midnight Express. The I've I've mentioned this before that Little Rock was a rowdy crowd at the Barton Coliseum, and it was one of the regular towns. But we had excellent police protection there. The same cops worked the matches every every time. And they knew what was going on, and they took real good care of the heels. And that's the place where the the guy had called in wanting to get a front row seat because he was going to shoot Ted DiBiase. And they sent the cops there that night. I've told that story. And then DiBiase comes back alive, and we're the main event. I go out and get in a cage and get jacked up 30 feet over the ring. I'm like, well, what a target I am. There's a guy there with a gun somewhere. But the cops in Little Rock was led by this he had to be six feet three or four, but he was 400 pounds. I've never seen a police uniform this size. I don't know where they got the gun belt. He was massive and he was assigned to me. So the eight or 10 of the cops would get in a circle around all of us to walk us to and from the ring. But this cop would grab me in like a bear hug and he would back to the ring or back to the back if it was real hot and real tight to where. He's got his arms around me and he's looking over my shoulder behind me so he can see anybody coming up on me. And he was so big, nobody could get around him to get to my front. So he would back me to the ring, right? Well, one week, it, it was probably toward the summertime, one of the cops comes up to me and says, you know, they just gave us new equipment on the force and we have new bulletproof vests. So I brought my old one for you. And I got, huh? He said, honestly, you might need this more than I do. I said, okay. So he gave it to me. And he said, now here's the thing. He said, and, and obviously if anybody's ever seen a police issue, bulletproof vest, it is, it you stick your head in it it's like a thing like like one of those parking attendant orange jackets or vests or whatever you stick your head in it and it goes down across your front and across your back and then there's velcro straps that bring it together on the sides it's like a life preserver except it's not big and bulbous like that it's just filled with whatever that material is and it's pretty heavy it weighs about i guess 10 or 15 pounds or whatever as i recall Anyway, he said, you probably need this worse than I do, which coming from a city police officer in Little Rock, Arkansas, didn't make me feel good. But he was careful to tell me, he said, now, it'll not only it'll stop bullets, except obviously not if you get shot in the head, but bullets to the body, and it'll stop knives, but it won't stop ice picks because it's some kind of metal weave in there, and the pick, I guess, is, is so small it'll go in between whatever. I don't know. I said, well, that's good to know. So I'm still fucked if somebody ice picks me, but I should be okay with... And that's the thing. That's why I wore it, because knives were more of a concern than guns, to be honest. I didn't... I wasn't ruling out the possibility that somebody would take a shot at us, because it had happened before in wrestling, and we had a lot of heat, but the chances were much, much higher that I would come in contact with a knife in the Louisiana Territory than actually get shot at, because that had happened so many more times. Tony Zane got stabbed in New Orleans one time. He was a job guy, but he was in a pull-apart, and the fan hit the ring and tried to stab the heel and stab poor old Tony Zane. Never had a lick of heat with anybody. So... At that point, I would wear it sometimes in Little Rock, but I would always wear it in Tulsa, and I would occasionally put it on in Lake Charles, and I think once in Biloxi, Mississippi, the towns that were bad and that the cops either sometimes were outmanned or not particularly motivated. And that's where I would, just in case, and and that's what I did with that. So yes, that's but so it was 
it was from Little Rock, but I wore it in a few different places. And I didn't want to see all the boys see me putting a bulletproof vest on because they're, they're going out there in their fucking spandex, right, with these maniacs. So I'd go in the bathroom and get in the stall, and I'd put it on and put my suit jacket back on and come back out. Nobody ever knew except Bobby and Dennis. Well, perhaps one of these fans would come down there and try to cut you and get tackled and have the crap kicked out of them by security. And although they had bad intentions, they may want to sue. Well, you know, you didn't have to make that transition because, God damn it, we got sued so many times down there. And as a matter <laughs> of fact, we went back to Louisiana to Baton Rouge in 1988 for WCW and got served a reprise of a suit that didn't go anywhere in 1984. That's how fucking bad it was. But I'll tell you what, none of those people suing us were uh, uh, able, because of the era in which it was, he was only like six years old at that time, to retain the services of the man who has now become not only the consigliere of the cult of Cornette, but one of the most famous barristers in all of pro wrestling history. I'm talking about this man. Call Steven P. The rest. Now, I'll tell you exactly how the Stephen P. New could be of ultimate service to you. I know this has happened to everybody. I know, Brian, it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you and many of the listeners out there. Let's say that a city police officer comes up and gives you his bulletproof vest because he says that you need it more than he does. Now, that's happened to all of us at one time or another. And let's say, for example, that the bulletproof vest does work for bullets and knives, as we've mentioned. But let's also say that some weasel sneaks an ice pick in there and gets in between that metal weave and perpetrates your innards with the ice pick. Well, then you'd have no choice left but to sue the manufacturers of that defective bulletproof vest because they didn't cover all of their bases. And that's where you would call the man, the myth, the legend, Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com. 888-692-8084. I'll I got an email right here. And it's from Eduardo. And Eduardo says, Hello, Corny and Brian Last. I wanted to thank you for the recommendation to Stephen P. New. I got let go from my job for having asthma. Can you imagine that? Wrongful termination. I got let go from my job for having asthma. And I just got in contact with the New law office, as we speak, they're going to pass the information on, and I appreciate your recommendation. If you, and as a matter of fact, Eduardo goes on to say, funny enough, all I said was I listened to a wrestling podcast, and the lady over the phone said, Jim Cornette? And I said, yes. <laughs> so, see there, you don't have to be the victim of a defective bulletproof vest. You don't have to be poisoned by one of these greedy corporations. You don't have to be an inmate at one of the jails in West Virginia where people are being treated like subhumans without the basic comforts of home. You don't have to be any of these flashy cases that we talk about. You just got to be somebody that's been screwed around and fucked over by some person that needs to pay for it. And that's where Stephen P. New comes in. So if you fit that description, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're an opioid-addicted infant, actually, if you are an opioid-addicted infant, get your parents' permission before calling newlawoffice.com at 888-692-8084. But what are you asking your parents for? It's their fault that you were born addicted to opioids. So instead, just pick up the phone, even if you're a baby, an infant, in swaddling clothes, and just go goo goo ga ga to the operator, and they will connect you to newlawoffice.com where you can sue somebody too. But if somebody's jacked you around, whether you're man, woman, child, old, young, skinny, fat, animal, vegetable, or mineral, Stephen P. New can get you paid and get you 
even for your situation. That's why we say get even with Stephen.